Hey guys, welcome to the Strongman Show, episode two. I'm joined as always by Marcus Charman, the caveman himself. I am Uncle Loz. Marcus, how's your week been? It's not been too bad, apart from turning my ankle. Um, it turns out that, uh, yeah, trying to trying to turn around with a big sort of uh, Cerberus sack and be aware of your surroundings. So now I've turned my ankle, I've been a little bit cheesed off, but other than that, you've just got to focus on what you can do. So lots of seated work for me for the, uh, for the rest of the week. How is it? Is it bad or is it just hopefully um, a couple of weeks you'll be okay? It's not too bad. You know, the whole thing of, you know, being in sports for a number of years, uh, rest, elevation, you know, uh, arnica. So the bruising's out, trying to keep the mobility going. And uh, But, yeah, it's just one of those things that sort of hurts your soul a little bit when you're, uh, you're just getting a little bit ahead in training and then you do something completely bloody daft. I think we've, we've all done it. We've all done it. I've got one of my frustrated more than anything else. One of my clients this week, he's been smashing PBs. He's been doing really well. He messaged me this week. He's twisted his knee messing around with his missus. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Don't give me that excuse." You know, I didn't have, I didn't have as much fun. No, <laughs> <laughs> I think they were play fighting or something. But yeah, we all, it's always doing something stupid as well. You know, we we kind of go through all these, you know, rituals that we do when we're training, and then sometimes you just hurt yourself doing the stupid. I've done thing. that. I have done that in the past. I still remember sort of prepping for uh, back when it was playing cricket, and I was just, you know really ridiculous thing renovating a bathroom tiles on the floor and i'll just quickly nip in and grab a, a toothbrush what do you do i cut the bottom end of my foot open on uh, on broken tiles so yeah, yeah idiot move really but you live and learn it's funny i've done stupid things like just before a competition i might be cooking and just cut my finger or something on a knife and it gets to you uh, anyway yeah. let's move on we've had a, a few events happening this weekend um yes. world ultimate strongman kicked off Rauno Heinler versus Konstantin Janasha, 400 kilo deadlift for reps. Incredible performance from Rauno. Yeah, it's, 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 hard to, it's hard to actually look at this one without a little bit of sadness because Konstantin, as we know, is coming back from injury. There's been very little to do. And we've spoken about athletes when you're in a country where there, there are not many other guys at your sort of calibre, even within 20% of it. Yeah. Um, it's been great to see him get back. It's been great to see him sort of do the odd bits and pieces, but there hasn't been much of anything else. And it just goes to show, look, I don't think at the moment for this particular event, you could have been paired with anyone else that is going to make you, you know, who's going to set a stand on it. Rauno is another level. You know, the guy when he's, you know, kind of, kind of sort of like 80% is still smashing things that no one else can dream of doing. You just know that if he dials in like he did, you know, what was it? The first first four reps were just Gatling gun. They were just, you know, at such a, a pace and power. Yeah. Um, and it's it's always one of those things, if, if you're not 100% correct, and, the, and Constantine isn't, I think you need, you need comp, you know, the odd comp under your belt just to sort of harden you up. Um, and then you need to train and dial in for it. Uh, I think it was evident by the lockout of the first one. He's, he's shuddering. The, the, the toll on the body was there. I mean, Janesh has never been a technically sound deadlifter. He's got his own interesting te technique, but he's extremely strong and powerful. Yeah. And obviously, was it 2018? He did those five reps in Manchester. I can't remember if it was 2017 or 2018. But um, he hit five reps head-to-head. -head, um, him and um, JF Caron both yeah. set the presidents with five reps with 400 kilos. You know, that was a contest where half the field and you got like world's strongest man finalists were either getting zero or one. Yeah. Um, you know, it was a, it was an amazing performance. And also the thing with Manchester is at the end of the season when everyone's mm. broken. Yeah. You know, this guy has competed a lot. And I think the, probably one of the, you know, the factors into this as well, he's a young kid and he is a kid. I can call him that because I'm old enough to be his dad. <laughs> um, he's, he's, he, yeah, I, I mean, no, you're absolutely right. And we're talking about what he's capable of in his, yeah. in, in, you know, great, great shape, great form. Unfortunately, he just wasn't, no. you know, you could say, I mean, and it's, I said this the other day, but it's hard to criticize someone for only getting two reps with 400 kilos. Yeah. How many of us dream of deadlifting, not just 400, but 300 kilos? Yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. Now this guy on a bad day has gone and pulled 400 for two. Yeah. Give him a few more months. Like you say, I mean, we talk about the comp. He hasn't had the, that kind of comp exposure this year, yeah. but it's been hard. He's coming back from injury, and then the whole season's just been a, a mess up with, you know, there's, there's no shows happening. 
Um, he's not in shape. There's travel restrictions that we've talked about time and time again. And we'll go into this a bit later because obviously last week there was the issues with Europe's strongest man, yeah. but Worlds coming up. And unfortunately, these comps aren't going to be as strong as they can be some years. And that's not the promoter's fault. That is just an un a very unfortunate situation right now. Yeah, they're the cards we've dealt with. You know, with Constantine as well, you can train as much as you like, but until you're actually in that, until you're under the lights or you're stood shoulder to shoulder with someone else of where something to you matters, that's the environment for anyone that's competitive that's going to eat the best out of you. That's, that's the 1% that you can't get anywhere else. And that, when you're doing something as extreme as this, you know, that's the bit that hones you. And even on a, even on a good day, you know, where he is just a strong, powerful and ultimately very, very confident guy. I think everything really is kind of stacked against you. When you're coming back from injury, you realise, you know what, because I can't just get back on the horse, that you feel a bit vulnerable and you're going to be asking yourself a question. Can I you still know, do this? The, the other thing is he wasn't able to train. Like a lot of the guys that have their own gyms, he actually yeah. wasn't able to train for a few months during the, the lockdown, you know, yeah. when it was at its, its harshest. And he's had a very short time to prepare for this. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it was disappointing to see, but I, I, I do personally think going forwards, it's a good thing for him. He knows where he is. He's got like a, a marker. He's still got a few months to World's Strongest Man, which he'll obviously want to be in his top shape for. So I think just having that little bit of exposure in front of the camera, um, something that he had to, you know, try and on the day he had to peak for. Yeah. Obviously, we know he's nowhere near his best yet, but that's the best he could do right now. Um, let's, let's see what he does in three months' time. Yeah. Solid training, solid eating. He looked physically smaller. His power was down, but he's still pulling two reps at 400 kilos. Yeah. I mean, my, 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 best, my best at my prime was three reps with 400 kilos. Yeah. So the fly going around. <laughs> <laughs> you, you have showered before. Uh, I, 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 I have indeed. It's, um, it's been a track. I must be giving off some kind of nice odor to it. Yeah. Or <laughs> but anyway, no, I, I think um, he'll take the positives. He's a, he's a confident guy, like you say. He's, he's got good experience now. He's competed at all the top shows. He, he just needs a bit more time. And the but, thing is, as well, we've spoken this, you know, the whole thing. If, if, he, if his first experience this year is to go, you know, he, he's done a little, did he do a little comp in Georgia just to sort of like oil the wheels a little bit? I think, I think he won again, Georgia's strongest man, but I think yeah. he might be like, he everyone else well in Georgia just waiting for things. So. <laughs> he might as well turn up and dag them for sort of competition, really, for the sort of standard. That's no disrespect. It's just that pure numbers of one particular country. Yeah. Um, but if, if his, you know, his first thing after that is going to be Worlds, then he's probably going to be like... You, you'll prepare as best you can, but you'll just you'll still be down on that percentages. Whereas just something, even though it's a singular lift, you know, in one in terms of one discipline, I think it's a setup because it's a case of do you know what it hurts my heart a little bit. I've got a standard I want to do. I did try really hard with what I got. I must because that's what's in all these guys. I must. I have to find a way. Yeah. So I think it'll actually do him some good. And I think at Worlds, you know, if we're lucky enough for it to all go ahead, uh, I think it'll get him, you know, close. He won't be back to where he was. He needs a few. But it'll get him close to where he'd be. You know, align that with a bit of nails, a bit of young hunger, he'd, he'd be fine. He'll be back. There's, there's, there's no question. Like, like you say, he's still a very young man. But one man is just literally head and shoulders above everyone else which you can't say in terms of stature because he's not the tallest dude in the world but round our hinder when it comes to a deadlift man alive that is his you know he is just incredible oh i i, I spoke to him and i've said this a number of times he, he he was promising me seven or eight reps and i kind of i i bought into it you know i was watching his his training um in reality the sixth rep was extremely hard yeah and you know, there was no more on that day. And wow. what, what an effort to, to get that sixth rep. Yeah, because you don't often, we've discussed this in the past. You know, once you're dialed in and you're hitting clean reps and you're, you're working for, for either singles or peak number, it's not very often you have to go dirty again. And it's really interesting to find a, a very, very explosive, very clean deadlifter have to go dirty yeah. and really fight there's, a rep. There's... There's, a bit, there's been a few sort of rare moments in Strongman. I remember Zadrunas. Zadrunas always made everything look 
just comfortable. He was never, yeah. he was never like the explosive fast lifter of like a, a Rauno, but he just made everything look comfortable. But 2011, World's Strongest Man, I think it was 442 kilos on the bar, and it was for a world record. It's the first time I've ever seen Zadrunas have to hitch a death. And it's like, you, you kind of, you, you're just not used to seeing it when someone has to go that deep into to water. It's like, he's, I mean, he's breaking a world record, but he's human. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? But also, incredibly, it, it's a tool he has in his armory. Yeah. Because, we, you know, you see some people and they falter when you've just got to, you know, you're in the trenches now, you've just got to fight for it. You know? Well, I don't know if you saw the interview with Rauno afterwards, but he, he said normally he would have just given up. But obviously the pressure of the cameras, knowing it was that world record, he just gave everything and then just collapsed to the ground afterwards. Yeah. If, if people could actually see the damage that this guy has, has sustained over the years, you've seen it, you know, because you've sat next to him in competition. But if, if, if Rano watches and wants to show people his Achilles and the surgeries and the gaps are missing, this is a guy that legitimately looks like he's been attacked by a shark. You know, I've seen footballers never reclaim, you know, any form of, of career again for tiny, tiny sort of, you know, bits of damage in terms of what this guy's been able to do. And obviously you've been on the receiving end of the knife as well. You know, it is quite incredible that he can go through such, you know, severe surgery and still come back. You know, we know there's things he's compromised on. He's spoken about this, you know, I think even in your interview with him. But he's found a way to sort of just overcome. You know, he understands his limitations. You know, he can't push press anymore. No. But he will find a way to do something just to keep ticking. But what an incredible guy. He really is. And I have to, I've got that soft spot for him because yeah. of going through some of the same things. You know, the injuries that I've been through, having to pick yourself back up and come back again. And Obviously, I mean, the Achilles pretty much has finished me off, you know, in terms of high-level competitive strongman. Yeah. It's uh, never say never, but right now, you know, the, the just drive and the want isn't there. I've got to admire a man like him. He's been doing it 20 years. Yeah. You know, he's not just come out of nowhere. He's been doing it 20 years. He's had injury after injury, setback after setback, keeps coming back, keeps proving that if you just believe in yourself, you keep drawing, training hard, eating right, finding new ways – you know, you get better. And he's done that. And, you know, for the youngsters watching, it's just, you, you don't expect to be world record level in three years. Yeah. You know, it takes a long time. And this guy has just grafted and grafted. He won his first major international. Bear in mind, he started 20 years ago. He won it three years ago, his major, first major contest. Yeah. You know, and he's... He's been an exceptional athlete across the years. It's just that, and this is where, you know, things like this, things like YouTube, where we've got the option to be able to sort of tag people in and, and go. But I, I'd implore anyone watching, if you, if you don't follow him, please do. Because, you know, it's, this is a life's work for a lot of people. There are guys and girls that come into the sport and they want adulation and fame and they want the likes and they want the pats on the back. Um, and as you've seen, you know, we, we watch people come into the sport and then vanish within three years. They might tick a little, you know, a little box or two. But it's those that, a literally weaving part of the fabric of what this sport is and understanding that it's a life's work. Yeah. They're the ones that do deserve the credit. So, you know, I would implore anyone that does watch and listen, go give them a follow, give them a little bit of love because do you know what? To actually stick around for such a long period of time when there is so little reward and your body is on the line yeah. to get some appreciation goes a long way. It does indeed. And he's got another chance in a few, uh, well, a couple of months, I guess is the deadlift for max. Yeah. And, I, I mean, they've got four incredible contenders going at it for that. It's going to be yeah. awesome to see. Uh, Payman was supposed to be doing it. Unfortunately, he actually he got ill for a while and, and yeah. he's had to pull out. But you've still got four huge deadlifters. I'm not convinced we'll see a world record this, this time around. I mean, probably if, we, if we're looking at training, I think um, Makarov is looking... Yeah. Uh, even Makarov, he looks, I mean, exceptionally close to, to that kind of level, but not pulling in the same manner that maybe like Thor did, yeah. um, you know, with the, the 501 or Eddie with the 500. But you've got four incredible deadlifters go, yeah. that are going to be battling it out on the day. It's going to be it's going to be really interesting to see who comes out on top. Around if he turns up, he's got a shot. One of the things that I, I, I just don't think we can overlook here is that it could be in some respects, one of the greatest deadlift days of all time, because 
you could happily see people pulling 480, 485, a 490, and maybe a 495. Oh, even if even if all four pull 455, a thousand pounds. Yeah. How incredible would that be? Yeah. Four guys on the same day pulling a thousand pounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's just when it's just that that headline figure has skewed the landscape, you know, of what sort of goes into it. But I'm going to give, I'm going to go back into to sort of round note and a couple of these guys really as well. Um, Payman especially, it's a shame that he's not going to be there. The amount of people that are pulling in suits and it doesn't make a deadlift look pretty. Yeah. Where, whereas a deadlift, a deadlift on song is a fucking beautiful thing to see because of what it is, the mechanism, the mechanics of actually being able to pull weight and stand it up and you're showcasing your lockout is a showcase. There are certain guys, Raul knows one of them when he pulls. He looks good when he pulls. Yeah. There's too many people, I think, where the, the suit is... It, you can see the exposure to the weight because of the way that the body is, is now sort of gone. But in some of the guys that are competing in this, they are as good as it gets right now. And it's great to, that you've got all four on one platform. But, yeah, Makarov, it will be interesting because it's not his stage. Yeah. This is where you're going to get a true, you know, understanding of where this guy's at. But what I kind of get from this guy, he's your street fighter. He's the guy that is still living in that one bedroom apartment. He's the guy that is still, you know, coming back to bloody noodles and sitting there <laughs> drinking water and scraping together. He's hungry because it's his life's work. Yeah. You so can. I think it would be great to see him with the lights and camera on, knowing that the world now is watching. What can you do? It's going to be interesting to see. I mean, he's, I don't know how he goes so heavy so often. It just, you know, it's incredible. But yeah, I just hope it doesn't shorten his lifespan in terms of lifting. Yeah. You know, his, his, his lifting career. Because that's the only issue when you see guys going heavy, heavy, heavy. They tend to be strong and then they just tend to vanish. Yeah. I just hope that doesn't happen because, you know, I think if he's smart, he could definitely be a world record holder in the deadlift in the yeah. not too distant future. Anyway, we'll move away from, from the, the Max Deadlift for now. Yep. Next week, uh, I'm not sure if everyone knows this, but the World Ultimate Strongman reached out to, to offer a wild card a spot for this year's or this season of the World Ultimate Strongman. Um, next weekend's event is the wild card. It's Trey Mitchell, Charles Mitchell the third from yep. the States. You're friends with Trey? Yeah. Um, yeah. He's, he's well, getting an opportunity it. at the 400 kilo deadlift for reps. We met Trey in Stoke when he came over with Martins. Um, and Martins had a raft of people in which to choose. Uh, and he chose, what was this, two years ago? So he chose a, a, probably a 22, 23 year old uh, Texan. Um, very softly spoken, great demeanor. Um, you know, a passionate guy when it comes to his sport. Most, most people aren't going to find that when they sort of stumble across him uh, because all you're going to see is, you know, yard work and, you know, softly dappled lip sort of barns of where he's lifting but what you're going to get in trays you're going to get a very very driven focused young individual that maybe isn't the most you know articulate outwardly at the moment through confidence issues but don't write this kid off as an athlete because by christ he is something special um we've witnessed last year if it wasn't for rob kearney doing what i would call the perfect medley of where one of the other implements as well was, was miscalculated and he still walked through the whole thing where you saw Hathor Bjornsson, you know, tear out on, on his, uh, on his haunches. Um, Rob Kearney had the standout moment of worlds for me, barring one thing. And that was Trey Mitchell going head to head with Alexei Novikov, uh, 14 reps of 180 kilo stone in Florida heat and humidity. Yeah. Um, and we saw Lexi, covered up, tackied up, tight shirt, focus, growling, literally led across the bar ah! at Trey. And Trey just like, right, ready to go. A tiny, <laughs> tiny, tiny bit of tacky, just in case. And I, I, I've i never seen anyone just, I'm just going to keep going. I'm just going to keep going. It was a brilliant thing to see. And I'm so, so chuffed that he's got the opportunity to show people what he's made of because yeah. he's a young kid 
with a big, big heart and a great future if people can uh, can guide him through sensibly. Yeah, like like you say, I mean, you know, he's young. He's got plenty of time ahead of him. He just needs to take these opportunities when they arise. Keep, you know, making people notice him. Keep performing like he is. And he's going to get the big opportunities come his way eventually. There's yeah. there's so many people we could have looked at for this wild card opportunity. Yeah. You know, I, I know you've got a few people you would have liked to have seen do it. Only goes out to one. Maybe they'll do it again. You know, it's it's. I think it's great that they've given the opportunity to to some lesser names, if you like. Yeah. Not that not that Trey's a lesser name. You know, he's been in the final, the world's strongest man. Let's remember yeah. that he's a he's a great athlete. But in terms of popularity, if you like, you know. There's... That's the thing. Outward popularity, yes. Inward popularity, probably not. Because when you look at the American audience in terms of top-level strongman, the amount of people, you know, including the current world strongest man in terms of Martins himself, will go to war for this kid. Yeah. Which tells you how seriously you should take him. When you've got the guy that holds the title, that will stand shoulder to shoulder with him and say, "Look, I'm backing this kid. Why? Why aren't you picking him?" Yeah. You know, you know you've got a good eye, but you also know Martins is a very smart guy. You know, Martins knows this kid is worth, you know, is worth his corn. So, uh, no, in terms of his deadlift, we saw recently, what was it, 415 triple belt list? Uh, no, not yeah, belt list, um, suit list, because he doesn't pull in a suit. Yeah. You know, which is an oddity now, you know, for, for a lot of guys. But this is a kid that just literally, you know, belt straps, uh, a pair of no ball boots and he just pulls. Yeah. Um, but he looks good with it. He does. Yeah, he doesn't he he, even for his final rep, his third rep. It's it's a slowdown, but there's no degradation of form. Do you think he'll get the record? Now, bear in mind the record is now six reps. No, no, I don't. And, but the thing is, as well, I think you could take the next five people that you would pick specifically for this one thing, and they're not going to break four to five. This is, this is the thing. I mean, a lot of guys watching, they're like, oh, Trey can break it, blah, blah, blah. And what he's done in the gym is fabulous, you know, truly incredible. And I don't want people to think I'm, I'm putting him down. But let's look at the people that have already attempted this record. Yeah. Adam Bishop has been lifting some ridiculous numbers in the gym. When you get to that fourth and fifth rep, it's just your body breaks down. And, and these are guys that make the first two or three reps look easy. Yeah. And I mean, we saw it with Rauno, four reps like it was nothing. Even his fifth rep was exceptionally good. Yeah, yeah. That sixth rep took everything. Yeah. Absolutely everything. And you're seeing it with most of the guys. They get two or three reps and yeah. then they're breaking down. Yeah. It's going to be interesting for me to see how his third rep looks compared I'm to. I'm going to go out on a limb on this. And I think he'll pull three. I think he'll pull three for like butter. I yeah. really do. Um, it would be interesting to see the one thing that we can't, we've got to kind of take into account. It is September in Texas. If you've ever been to Texas, I have, it is hot. I've, dead, I've deadlifted in Texas. <laughs> yeah. Oh man alive. Yo, it is, it is ridiculously hot. The humidity will be up at the moment, but no, I, I genuinely think four will happen. The only thing I've never really seen is I don't know. I don't know what he's like under a fight in terms of can he hitch? Yeah, and he fight one up. Uh, I, I tend to agree. I think four is going to be the number we yeah. see. I, I, I'd love to see more. I just think if he has know, a good day, I think he hitch five. You got Jeff, Jeff, Jeff Caron hit four. Yeah, you know, there's the, the guys that went in the, the Jerry Pritchard, one of the biggest deadlifters of all time. He only hit four. Yeah, I'm, I'm only saying these numbers out to just make people understand yeah. the magnitude. Yeah. This record, yeah, and that's what I mean. You, you literally could be there, like one of uh, one of you know there, five people that have got anywhere near it. There's two men that deserve in their prime to be put into this kind of category, and that's Thor and Eddie. Yeah. Thor and Eddie when they were pulling 500, and let's let's remember when they were pulling 500. Not now. They're both training for something different. They are nowhere near. Yeah. You know that they would struggle. And even though Thor did it this year, he's already dropped so much weight. His training is now focused on something different. He's still a big, big, strong man, but he would not beat the record if you asked him to do it today. Yeah. When he went for that 500, I believe seven or eight was possible for him. Yeah. And I believe the same for Eddie. I think when Eddie did his 500, seven or eight reps is possible. Beyond that, you know, you talk, you've got to be a, four, a 520 
to 530 deadlifter to get an extra rep on top of, of those? They are all very different as well when they come through to mentality. It's just that, you know, there's a lot of these guys which are, you know, life students of the sport. They're committed to it. Again, as we've spoken, it's a life work. Yeah. Eddie would drop dead on a platform. Oh, his, his, his commitment, whatever you think of the guy, yeah. when he put his mind to something, the, 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 the focus, like laser focus, I've, very, very rarely do you meet an individual as determined as that. Yeah. And actually, the two of them are very similar. Yeah. And I, I would put now Luke Richardson into that kind of yeah. category. A yeah. couple of others. I mean, there's, there's, always, there's always guys that you just look at and you think, when they say something, you just believe them. Yeah. They, you're like, yeah. And, and even if you don't believe them, they, they don't care. They're going to prove you wrong. Oh, exactly. It, it, because it is you know, ingrained in their very being that that's what's going to happen. But it, you, know, you take that name, we know how good Luke is. We know how powerful Luke is. But in recent, you know, head to heads as well, he, he yeah. drew with Graham and, and Adam. Exactly. The latest so deadlift. The magnitude event. of this particular lift and the, the understanding that, you know, and it's a very bold statement to say that he's going to get four. It's, it's almost ludicrous to, I mean, to say he's going to get a fifth. Let, let's remember when Adam Bishop went head to head with Rauno the last two times, Rauno beat him in comp. And everyone knows how good a deadlifter Adam Bishop is. You know, that, that, that's yeah, because that's the guy because he's the guy that if you, you know, if you want to go and actually watch someone make a deadlift look good, you pay and see Adam. Oh, I mean, beautiful technique. If you want to yeah. learn how to deadlift, watch him. Yeah. But you're talking the absolute best in the world right now. Yeah. I haven't, we haven't seen Trey compete at that level yet. And that's why I can't sit here and say, oh, he's going to yeah. go and break the record. You know, one I'm, thing that I think counts in his favor is the one thing that also hinders him at times. It's demeanor because I don't see the boy getting phased. Yeah. I literally think this is a, you know, you see a lot of people, they don't travel very well, but you know, you've just taken a young boy out of Texas and dubbed him in rainy Stoke. Yeah. He did as he was told. He performed do, do you know to that the contest, level. And he doesn't get phased. At that contest in Stoke, I was supposed to team up with um, uh, Martins. Yeah. And obviously got injured. And I think Trey had about two days' notice. Yeah. So it was a yeah. it was a good performance. The, the improvement that we've seen in him in the last two years has been great. I'm he looking is. for I'm looking forward to seeing it because this is going to give us a good indication of where he's at. He's being told he needs to get ready on a certain day. Let's see what he can do. And I mean, he's already the reserve for world's strongest man. There's been a lot of kind of debate on whether he deserves to be there or not. I actually think as he's the reserve, especially with the way things are this year, he'll end up being at worlds anyway. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's there's so much yeah. uncertainty right now with what athletes will end up being at Worlds. So the travel think, is going to be the big thing. I think realistically, though, it just comes up as a point of pride. You know, we are told a number of things all the time that there are pathways and they're set in stone. And you know, the the examination is really like for who is there. I've always stated that it'd be nice just to have that list and why they're there. It doesn't take much, you know what I mean, in terms of, you know, if you have a European competition in football, you, you're a winner of this or you came a runner up here. Um, the only oddity, really, and the anomaly to a lot of the official thread that goes out, and it means putting one of my favourite strongmen in terms of a professional, because if anyone's asked me, how do I become a professional strongman? One of the first people I'm pointing to is Robert Oberst, because Robert Oberst is a professional strongman. Yeah. First and foremost, he might not be the best athlete on the planet at the moment, but he is one of the best professional strongmen. Yeah. He earns a living out of it. It's his trade. I don't understand how Robert is there and Trey isn't, given the parameters that you find yourself in, in terms of a top three at a Giants Live. You know, he doesn't tick any of the boxes that we've, we've heard outwardly. Yeah. So when Trey has made the final, I can understand the uproar especially from within, especially with a lot of the other yeah, Americans. You, yeah, you, can, you can definitely see the debates of, of yeah. why people should or shouldn't be there. It's There's... just nice to, be, you know, to, to actually have some clarity. And it's one of those things that, you know, for a, a, li a simple little bit of logistics, to put it on a, an official form and just say, there you go, there's the pathways and the reasons why they're there, it just nullifies the debate mm -hmm. because I'm sure people are tired of it. Yeah. So it'd be nice just to sort do you, of like... Do you think we need, we need like fixed rules of like how to qualify for World's yeah. Strongest Man? Yeah. Because obviously, I mean, if you get top three at a Giants Live, you qualify. No one can argue with, with those spots. 
So those guys deserve the, 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 the invite. You can't, you know, if you get an opportunity to go to a Giants Live and you underperform, that's on you as an athlete sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you have to kind of hold my hands up. But then I, I appreciate the, well, why is that guy going and that guy's not? Yeah, uh, and and I I see you know what you're talking about, um, and maybe we just need a really clear cut way of right. This is why they're here. Blah yeah. blah blah. Because it's not really for us. It's just that there's so much out there in terms of the people. You know, there will be people scratching their heads. But also, if you have got that young athlete that's looking and through, you know, and they just thought, well, how am I going to get there? To, how yeah. am I going to get there? Well, that thing was said, but that wasn't delivered. You know. Sure. Maybe, you know, just a little clarity goes a long way. Well, talking of Worlds, the events have been released. Oh, cool. Let's go. So, events for the groups. We've yep. got a loading medley. This yep. is, this, uh, I want to point out that this is the information as well that the athletes are given. So, okay. a loading medley, but no specifics. Yeah. A squat, but no speci specifics. A truck pull, a deadlift, a log lift, and last man standing, which I will confidently say is the stone head to head. Um, eliminator as they've done the last few years yeah and I know I mean you, you shook your head then but you just told me a minute ago your favorite moment of worlds last year was Trey Mitchell on the stones yeah. getting 14 reps yeah so I know I, I know that's because there's two sides of you you've got your athlete side yeah and then your fan side and yes. I think I genuinely see it as a, from a fan's point of view yes it is exciting it's yeah. exciting to see two guys going head to head it is if, a, you've got, if, if you've got the good matchup as an athlete, so, it's terrible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and in terms of you know, I, I I'll point out things like Kevin Ferris, you know, puts the wrong tacky in his bag, you know, hasn't got hasn't got hot weather tacky, uh, can't pick the stone up. Um, um, Martin, th 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 things like that are always the athlete's fault. You've got yeah. to be. You it's just hard, you, you know. It's, again, it's that, it's that torn thing. It's just sure. heartbreaking. And then you've got the you've got the guy in the next position who's got to quickly get ready. Then you don't really get a spectacle as such. Yeah, yeah. But then you've got things like the the you know the Luke um, Stoltman versus Rob Kearney. You know, two great mates in the group. One's going to knock a friend out, but at the end of the day, they do the professional thing. They're all in, and it was a brilliant, brilliant sort of competition. Some of them are hit, some of them are miss. Um, but again, as you pointed out, every once in a while they sweet spot it, and you get a moment that's going to stay with you forever. Well, I've, I've, I've those fans. That was one of them. I personally don't like it as an event. That's just my personal view. I'm not saying yeah. I'm right or wrong. I'm just saying personally, I don't like it. And the yeah. reason I don't like it is because it's putting too much emphasis on one event. Yeah. And in strongman, you know, when you look at Strongman as a whole, every single competition, it's about being the best all round. Yeah. So we all what have different have events. That, sorry? What would you have as a replacement or alternative or just... I wouldn't. Just, I would just have six events to, to get to the group. Actually, I, I, that's, that's a lie. I would scrap the groups and I'd do a 10 or 20 man final with more events. That's yeah. what I would do personally. Yeah. And e even if you wanted to say have 20 guys and then you eliminated a few after a certain amount of events. What, three days? Yeah, three-day competition. Three let's say yeah. Eight to ten events and, and decide the, the strongest man on, on the yeah. planet. Split into different TV shows. So yeah. athletes get more exposure. People that are good at a certain event get their time on TV. Because yeah. at the moment, when in World's Strongest Man is on TV, it's about whoever's challenging for that title. And you'll sometimes get a guy win an event but it's not done so well on the whole show, but he yeah, wins an event. Yeah. And they, they won't even show it. I mean, a good example was Mike Burke. Mike yeah. Burke, a few years back, he won the overhead medal, or he was joint first, or either he, him and Zadrunas were joint first or second, I can't remember. But he, he performed brilliantly. But because Mike wasn't in that top three hunt, he didn't even get any airtime. So I, I would like to see guys get that opportunity. You know, if you're good on a certain event in the final, say there's 10 events, yeah. and... I don't know. Hicksy wins the log lift, you know. He gets that airtime, but then he might not do so well on the other events. He's not challenging for that overall spot. Yeah. At least the TV time is there for him. Same with like someone like a, an Iron Bibby, who's got events that you think that guy's exceptional at, but you know as an all-round competitor, he's probably not going to be challenging the, the top few guys for those, you know, podium positions. It's like what we've spoken about before, though. You know, when it goes now to competition, and we see this all the way down to amateur and novice level in the 
you know, you get guys that just look at the competition and say, oh, I'm doing that one now. You know, it doesn't, doesn't suit me. Mm. That really boils me because it's a case of that's the one that you need to be doing. Yeah. But when you look at a world's final, because you are now segmented by four, you know, five events or six events, it's kind of, that really now favours one one guy's characteristics. Sure. Whereas it's actually not a true reflection of who's the strongest guy in the world. Sure. Like, as you say, if you have those those 10 to 12 events and it is over three days, you're in the mix. You're literally getting every single part of your physique, your mental, you know, I, I, it's all being tested. I really believe like what I, I'm kind of like putting forward would help World's Strongest Man because yeah. unfortunately there is money issues right now. They're, they're not getting as much sponsorship for, for putting on these events. They've had to reduce the amount of time that they're out there for. So I'm saying, right, reduce the amount of athletes. Let's have a clear cut system to get the best whatever it might be, 10, 15, 20 athletes, whatever it might be, let's get a real clear-cut system to get those 20 guys to World's Strongest Man. You've got some brilliant setups in terms of... One of the things that I think inhibits Worlds and uh, a lot of the... You've only got so many people that are in that sort of pot. And when they've run something, a lot of people, when it comes through to competition, run things they know work. Change isn't always feared, but sometimes you're, you're hesitant because, do you know what, it's going to throw up a lot of things that we've uncovered in the past and they took a long time and it was a problem to sort it out. But that's with the same eyes. When you have so many different people available now which have got different sort of, you know, a different set of eyes, which means a different way of looking at things and a different way to fix things. But also then when you look at other competitions around the world and you say, right, okay, we've got 20 spots, but we've got how many countries? Well, that's when you can look and just say, right, okay, the amount of, you know, kind of um, top tier competing athletes out of the UK, yeah. you know, we know that we've got winners, you know, we're sending five to six, you know, we, we could probably send a seventh really, you know, just to, if, if need, needs must, but then you've got little outlying areas of where you could take like a Macedonia, you know, you could take it, you know, like Estonia where you've got both Irving and Rauno. And sort of surrounding areas of where, okay, there's in this particular region, there's two places. Well, that's where you have a competition. That's where you find the people. But you put the time and effort into the, the year, you know, work for comps in and around Europe, where you can also then find your gems. Because I do think that we are, we're missing, we're missing some really, really important things. But if, there's, if there are competitions dotted around, we've seen like Zadrunas' competition. You know, it throws up some really, really sort of good athletes um there's enough bodies around the world to actually get people sat down and saying do you know what big z take this area brian you want to take america at the moment because you're trying to do good things and plow money into the sport give us three legitimate athletes that we can take anywhere on the planet and they're going to be good but encourage the next 10 to come through do you think one of the the, the hard things with strongman is every competition varies and you can have one guy look amazing in one comp and then go to another show and look quite average that's that, I find that quite exciting about strongman, but the issue is you'll have guys like you'll tell me a guy's really good. I'll say, right, bring him over to this competition. You've seen him compete in one set of events. Yeah. I'm putting him up against a, a completely different set of events with different yeah. equipment and suddenly he's a different athlete. And that's, that's one of the things that's why you have to respect the guys that are extremely good all round. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think we've become a, we've become accustomed now to being exceptional at one event just to get your Instagram videos out there and become yeah, popular. Yeah. But the guys that win competitions again and again and again, or place high at competitions again and again, do not have weaknesses. And that comes back to let's have 10 events in the final because at World's Strongest Man, what have we got? We've got 12 events. Yeah. So we've got 12 events, but only half the events count. If you, if you, you kind of get what I mean, by the time, you know, you've done six events or five events or whatever it might be to get yourself to the final, then it's all back to zero. And it's only those six events that count. Last year, it was even less than that. It was only five events. So it's good yeah. to see they've, they've upped it to six again. But I'd like to see eight. I'd like to see 10. Yeah. You know, I, th I, I, do, I do agree with you. I think there should be a minimum standard for something like Worlds. It should be, it should be the hardest competition. I, I, Not I, I, the heaviest, but the hardest. I don't agree with the fact that being a strong man across all facets of strength isn't about what you know being static it's, not, it's not being it's not about being a power lifter no it's no, about being the best that's the thing that there's so many bits of it now where there's so much focus now on the deadlift you know rather than what was 
beautiful about strongman is that the implements that you used because it was just a case of right firstly how am i going to lift it you know my personal views on this as well and also what i want to do myself which is you know events where people show up they have no idea what they're going to do until the day oh, no, I, I love that idea but not for yeah. world's strongest man i think no that... no no god no there, there does need to be preparation we know how badly things can turn out if all of a sudden you know say for example say a sponsor decides to jump the weight up an extra hundred kilos how damaging that can be to an athlete yeah you know, we need for those elite level shows they need to to have time to prepare and the events need to be set you want the very best show from the very very best on yeah. the planet but definitely as a, as a standalone competition a little bit more laid back a little bit more fun uh, yeah. it's, it's it's a great concept but um i haven't gone through the events for the final yet so let's yeah. let's quickly look at that so the first event for the final is the farmers into the yoke okay then we have deadlift again i'm not i'm not sure if it's the cage deadlift deadlift for reps deadlift for max the the axle bar so some kind of deadlift keg toss good to see that back into a world's yep. strongest man i think that's a, a good interesting event hercules hold which i think is is cool to see i used to love watching the hercules hold i've done it a couple of times i think visually it's impressive um and obviously grip sort of just vanished from strongman for a while so very interesting to see that back in the log ladder which is a, a great overhead test um again not sure on the weights but i'm going to presume it will be four or five logs you know going up maybe 120 140 160 180 maybe a 200 yeah. um that would be exceptionally hard to see yeah. someone hit 200 after doing those but awesome to see and the final event as always the atlas stones <sighs> Uh, what, what, I can't. I can't hide my meh moment. Okay. When okay what's to, what's disappointing? What's disappointing you in those events there? Um, Atlas at Stones final when it's just going to be the same, roughly. Well, I, as, I, 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 I think I could have told or stacks. I could have told you there'd be Atlas Stones in the final five years ago for today for for, for next year's competition. It's just become the norm. We expect there to be Atlas Stones at the end of the groups. We expect there to be Atlas Stones at the end of yeah. the final. I would lo I, I agree. I'd love to see something different. I don't. As I say, it would just be nice. I like if you had almost um, like the Le Mans style to Atlas Stones in terms of right. You stand apart. You know, there's a platform. There's the different heights. You know, even if it's a hundred kilos, you know, we we saw at Europe's how difficult people found it to actually just get a hundred kilo stone and press it overhead. But I would genuinely love to see some of the old bits and pieces where it was right. Okay, pick it up, shoulder it, get it to the platform, and just throw that dynamic in when you're just right one one one. It is an incredible feat, but the problem is we're almost desensitised to how incredible it is because we've got two or three people which are run away. Yeah. You know, whereas if you took the person that came last at Worlds on stones and put him into a competition with 99.9% .9 of any other strongmen on the planet, they'd probably win and they'd look spectacular doing it. But it just makes the whole thing and the, the exceptional nature of this event just a little bit, well, he didn't do it in under 20 seconds, so he must be shit. <laughs> I, I actually quite like the mix of events for the final. Like I said, yeah. I, I'd I like, like there's a good squat in there. I, I do like a medley. If, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm kind of of the, you know, you know my beliefs. So I want to see 10 events in the final. Yeah. And I think if you've got 10 events in the final, leave stones in by all means. Yeah. But we have had Atlas stones in every single, or, oh, I think there was one exception where they did um, the power stairs. Yeah. Um, 2012, was it? Yeah. But, uh, and then you uh, say so you got, just a keg toss there's other implements we can have yeah i, I l actually really enjoyed watching the um the bullion you know yeah. because again it's it's a different dynamic in terms of the you change you change a keg for a sandbag yeah you can't throw them the same oh yeah it's a different implement definitely yeah just and i just i like that part of it but it's again it's just um you'll get one or two head-to-heads in that which will be phenomenal I, I'm actually happy to see the keg toss. And this is an event I was particularly great at in terms of strongman, but visually I've always enjoyed watching it. And as I got, as I sort of got towards the end of my career, I started training it a lot and I got actually pretty good. Um, one of the gyms I train at actually has a whole setup, but it was actually the, um, the sandbags I've trained yeah. on quite a bit, got pretty good on them. And I've always wanted to have a go at it since in contest. I've done it as a few exhibitions and, and look pretty good, but 
I always, I was always, 2014 World Strongest Man when Brian and Thor were sort of head to head on that and uh, Europe's Strongest Man when Zadrunas was incredible and, and Lalas, you know, it, it can be an exciting event, but it can also be an event that throws up a lot of surprises. Yeah. We'll go back to 2011 World Strongest Man. I was in Travis's, Travis and myself were in the same group. Yeah. Travis was a very good keg tosser, but he messed it up big time. And he threw a couple of that, that didn't go over, they got the height, but they didn't go over. Yeah. And then suddenly panic kicks in and he ended up doing quite badly on an event that he would have thought was a banker for him. Yeah, yeah. It's one of those events that can really surprise people and it can just make a contest that little bit more interesting. Well, we spoke about someone that we, we now say is, you know, is one of the best at it in terms of a Tower Slanas. But again, you go back to Worlds and was it the first time he'd ever done it? Um, yeah. Well, where, where like the first one was a flat throw, then the second one was sort of hit, then it hit again. But it, it took him a little bit to dial in, you know. And he, you're right; it can completely sort of change the dynamic of it. But it's it's another one where you can have these exceptional shows, the likes of Brian and uh, and Hathor going head to head, while you've got two barrels in the air at the same time when he's virtually grabbing a third. You know, yeah. just gone into the stratosphere. And then you've got others where they sort of hit a few times and it's like, you know, it sort of drags the heels a little bit. It's probably very easy for the guys then to edit these guys out. And it's like, okay, we've only got a certain amount of content. It's just that I think implement changes are always good. I'd actually quite like to see different implements as you went as well. That would be interesting. At the end of the day, if you're a strong guy that's, you know, working your body like a bloody trebuchet to get rid of it, then... Change I, think, the I think that would be really cool. I mean, if you look back through World's Strongest Man history, they've used a number of different implements for yeah. throwing events from, you know, gold bars. They yeah. use um, the old fashioned weight for height. Yeah. Uh, that's 50- good as well, because again, that's a very technical being able to actually get up yeah. and lift the ring. You know, it's a great event to see. In the early 2000s, they used the really big kegs. Yeah. And they, they, they went to the smaller kegs because some of the short guys complained yeah. like there's not enough distance. Between well, you say them. short guys, you know, what, you're six, six, two, six, six three. Two, six, yeah, two, so two, I'm yeah. six foot and I still can't clear a, a full size. But you, know, you have to short change it and yeah. really arch to, to basically lever it over. But, but that, that, that's the reason they changed to the, yeah, the yeah. smaller, smaller kegs. But I, I'd like to see a few, a little bit of variation on either something like that with different events or maybe one year, let's do the keg for max height. Or a set height, but for max weight. Yeah. So we just keep or, going until it gets heavier. Or max distance. Max distance would be interesting. <laughs> then we're going to clear one bar to start with over a certain thing, and then they just measure distance because I would really, really like to see these guys just explode. Yeah. Because it is all that there is all that sort of kinetic energy there, and to actually see it in terms the, of the only the only really interesting thing with with these throwing events though. Would a really good thrower come and beat all these guys? And it's not, it's not a bad thing if they would, because like we said, you know, the best thing, the, the great thing about being a strong man is you've got to be an all round athlete. It's not about who has the biggest deadlift, who has the biggest squat. Who, it's about being the best all round. Yeah. But do you think that like a thrower could come in? Because the, the kegs aren't that heavy. The problem is it's the sweet spot then between weight. The technical ability for one would be fine and you'd be able to see the distance. Sure. You'd be able to see the transition point. But the moment you increase to a certain weight, that's where you get the breakdown. The power kind of. And it's just that, you know what, when you actually look at the evolution, actually, Hathor is a great example. It's when Brian sort of basically said, you've got to be something special to, you know, to beat that. No one's yeah. going to beat that. And then Hathor, you know, a year later, absolutely destroyed the time. No, you know, the same, same day. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was the same day. No, but I mean from his previous... Sure. Know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where he was... The oh, the, the world before. records just got better his te- and better. His technical ability on that particular event was, it was a leap. Sure. It was an absolute leap. He came into that, well, obviously, if, if he'd matched what he did the year before, he'd still been second. Yeah. But what he did is he surpassed everyone. And that's, that just goes to show as well that certain guys within this, they can, they can evolve their technical ability because they are athletes. They're mm-hmm. dynamic athletes as well. I yeah. say, you know, go back to one of our own, not biggest lad in the world, but Graham. You know, Graham's actual ability to to be quite a dynamic athlete in this, you know, space marine shell that he's built himself is incredible. He's a oh. really powerful, explosive athlete. Very, very, very. You know, but he just, he looks like Bowser from, 
um, Mario Kart. <laughs> <laughs> right, looking at these events, who do you think it suits this year for World's Strongest Man? I, you can never rule out Mateus, no matter what you put down. If Mateus isn't in your, if Mateus isn't in your podium, then it's you don't know strong man because you know you, we always go back to that whole thing. And I know Mateus hasn't won worlds, but he's picked up titles and he's he's shown he's a bit. He just is the guy that if if you had a team event and there was a wild card event in there that no one knew what it was. He is the guy that I would push to the front of the team so I don't really care what it is. You'll do very well on it. Yeah. Whereas there are other guys who are all in that sort of top 10. You've kind of just got, well, if I've got to put my mortgage on it, I'm going to be second guessing myself. But Mateus is just complete. Mm. You know, and he's, he's always seems to be hungry. So Mateus, I don't think you can always rule out. Um, do you know what? There's, there's little nips and tucks in here, but then I'm going to look at this and say, do you know what? This kind of, Everyone now that you pick after this kind of has little holes. As you know, you could always like Graham, Graham if he gets through, you know, the squat, the log, the deadlift, he's flying. You know, the grip event, he will train this now to the umpteenth degree, so he will be better. But it will be a look. Then the kegs, he will be fine. But do you know what? Graham could make a podium on those events if he gets two things, you know, two standards up. But he will be threat. A Luke Stoltman. Stockman's got half decent squat. He's going to be very, very good on log. He's going to be um, good at the um, the uh, the farmers and the the yoke. Because you don't have. This is the thing. You haven't got to win them all. No, no, no. You need You've to be just consistent. Got to be in the mix. And again, Luke's going to be that guy. Kill that fly. No, I don't know where he's gone. He I'm going to buy back. you a flamethrower. That's <laughs> the only way to do it. Elon Musk. If you're looking, I know you made a flamethrower. Uh, <laughs> if you could do one more for big laws, that'd be brilliant. We need to kill that fly. Uh, uh, afterwards. <laughs> It's getting killed. <laughs> so I've got to say, I really think if he's going to have a chance at a fifth title, this right. is the year for Brian Shaw. Looking at these events, I mean, I've it's not been... Com- like, it's almost like history is writing itself early with Martins not taking part. And, you know, I don't want to be a conspiracy theorist about <sighs> this, but... No, yeah. I mean, let, let's be honest. We Before, still don't... No we're Eddie, still, no, you know... Well, we still don't know who's going to get to World's yeah. Strongest Man. You know, there, there could be a lot of issues. I mean, governments are changing rules every bleeding day at the moment. Let's it's- just, let's cover one thing as well. There is a distinct possibility, worlds as we know, it might not happen. Yeah. Yeah. It could end up being like, you know, an Atlantic battle. So let's, let's try and be positive and let's hope that that isn't the case. <laughs> let's try and yeah. think the world is going to go ahead. Brian, and I've been a critic of Brian over the last couple of years, and I'm not yeah. a critic, but just... No, just pointing just out the tracks, obvious. Really. You know, he's, yeah. he's passed his best, I believe. I mean, a lot yeah. of people are now bigging him back up, saying he, he's back to his best that he's ever been. I think it's hard to say at the moment, because you can't tell from training right. and competing. But he's looking very good. This is an exceptionally good set of events for him. He's yeah. good at farmers and yoke. He's very good at deadlift. He's exceptional at keg toss. He's got a very good grip. His log is very you know strong and decent and he's one of the best stone lifters in the world he is the guy that doesn't have a weakness Kiliuskowski is not the best deadlifter in the world and he also doesn't have the best grip in the world when it comes to to Hercules hole he's he's I mean he's good at farmers and things like that but when it's holding for a long time he's not performed exceptionally well in those type of events so he has now two events that you sort of think okay yeah yeah it depends where he places on those. If he can kind of come in with a great performance and who else is in the and final. That's the thing with this as well. When it, it, first, we need to know who makes the final. because oh, These are all if, kind of factors. If you, yeah, if, if you get it to the point of where you're picking the, not the, you know, the obvious runners and riders, what makes this, again, quite dangerous is that they're all capable of taking their points off each other. And yeah. whilst you might not be bad, when we've seen this before with a stone run, you seen you know, someone at 19 seconds, you've seen a couple in the 20s, one at 22, and all you are is two seconds off, which is literally that, I, and you're I eight. S- I say this all the time, but Stones always comes down to who's doing well in the competition. Yeah. You know, the, if you are in with a shot of placing on the podium, you're going to give it all. If you're yeah. at that position where it's not gone your way in the final, you're tired, you're just like, I just want this comp to be over now, 
you don't give the same effort. And I know that from experience myself, and I know from watching many, many, and competing in many, many strongman contests, it always comes down to who's in contention. But what I mean is, in terms of there are now, because if you get those guys in, in kind of an order, you don't actually have to have a bad event, but you can still end up being eighth. Sure. Because yeah, yeah, of course. That, that tightness. You could, you know, something like the log, you could end up with, you know, so many people packed into that one area. Yeah. Some as simple as I'm just going to take my time to get this one right and have a go. It's cost you. Sure, sure. I mean, uh, you, you look at these events. There's there's so many guys that are going to be in contention. I mean, a JF Caron, he'll like these events. Decent at Farmers and Yoke. Very good deadlifter. Good keg tosser. Uh, he's got an exceptional grip on him. Yeah. Exceptional. You know, he's not far behind Mark Felix level when it comes to, to, to hand strength. Yeah. Um, his log has improved vastly over the years. And the thing with the log, again, it will come down to who's in the final. There's a lot of great log lifters that probably won't get to the final. And yeah. that, that, that's when all the kind of, you know, factors come into play. I don't know the whole list of World's Strongest Man. Even, even when they announce the list of guys that World's Strongest Man, I'm still not be the same. until they're all there and they're yeah. ready to kick off. So it's really hard to make those predictions right now. Yeah. But if he can come in in form, if Brian Shaw comes in in, you know, 2016 kind of form, yeah. that man is going to be exceptionally hard to beat with this set of yeah. events. Yeah. There's no, there's no Thor, there's no Lysis, and they're the obvious contenders in yeah. terms of that kind of level. Kilius Koski, we always talk about, and I've, I've kind of bigged him up, you know, massively yeah. over this year. I don't believe this is the best set of events for him. No, no it, it was immediate on terms of social media as well, when they sort of said, you know, yeah. people sort of shrugging their shoulders. I, it's just that it, it's one of those, um, it's one of those situations that, do you know what, he might not just have any pressure. Yeah. Yeah, the, the only pressure I've ever seen him apply to is, is his own anyway. I hate, he'd but, always put that on him. But I love the fact that because he is what he is, you know, it wasn't that long ago when people sort of said because his body broke down, he can't deadlift. But, you know, he's, he can deadlift. Oh. He just can't deadlift to the to the standard of like a Rauno Heinler and stuff like that. But no one now can, um, you know, with the world record being set. It's just that... To win competitions, you, you don't have to. You've got to be good all round. And, you yeah. know... When you look at the events again, I mean, Kiliuskowski. Let's look at Farmers and Tioke. Who's going to touch him on that? He's he he, yeah. he he's exceptional at yeah. those kind of events. Deadlift, okay, we know is his weakness. It's going to depend on where he can place. Yeah, Ke Kektos, I should imagine he's good. I don't have much visual experience of what he's like at it. But I could also imagine him getting one wrong. Yeah, three yeah. or four. You know, in number three or four, and it throwing him. Yeah, same with someone like, um, oh, uh, Alexei Novikov, yeah. an another guy of tremendous power. But sometimes an event like that, one goes wrong. Whereas you know Brian Shaw will be Make extremely not. well practiced on that. Event. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You no, know, he he. It's an event he just trains and trains and trains yeah. and and he, he masters it. Log ladder. Normally we'd say Kiliuskowski is gonna, you know, he's gonna be hard to beat on that. I've seen him do many log ladders, many log lifts, and he's exceptional. He won motions most of them. Yeah. He's coming back from tricep injury. Yep. We just saw, you know, Janasha massively underperforming on a deadlift. And he's coming back from tricep injury. It wasn't even a, a, a lift that affects you, a, a surgery that affects your lift. Yeah. Tricep surgery is going to affect that, that log lift. Has he had enough time to be top shape on his pressing? That's going to be a big factor. Obviously, we know he's good at stones. Um, and I know as a competitor how hungry he is. And I know he wants to win this title. So I certainly wouldn't be you know, counting him out right now, but I'm just putting the, the narrative out there that it's not the best set of events for him. No. You know, I would have thought any events you chucked this year, I, I, did, I didn't expect this set of events, to be honest. I didn't expect to see a Hercules hold and a keg toss in the final. Yeah. That's, that's kind of like threw me a little bit. So fair play to Worlds to, for, th for mixing it up a little bit. But um, out of all the guys, especially the contenders, the ones you can really think of, I mean, yeah. even like to Tom Stoltman, Great some events there. Yeah. Some events, like, he's not the best at Farmer's Walk in the world. He's yeah. notoriously done badly on the Hercules Hold at um, Giants live shows. Which is surprising when he's got massive great mitts. Hopefully, I mean, he's got the tools to be good. So maybe yeah. practice and, and, you know, there's still a few months to, to hone everything. And obviously he's going to, I mean, I can't see him being bad at the, the keg toss. Can you? <laughs> no, just purely, there already. Yeah, just, 
you know, his, his power now is very good. It's like ridiculously strong. And he's another one like Mateus of way. He's got this body, but he doesn't look sort of hamstrung by it. It just looks like it's like, I'm meant to be this big. Yeah. He's hey. all the time. I, um, I think it's going to be. And then, you know, so the rest of the British lads, we, you know, like, look, again, Hicksie isn't actually on this. I can't, I, do you know what? I'd, I'd have him up there. He's just he's genuinely threatening. Yeah. Because we all spoke about having that weapon in your sort of and and if you can in that sort of in that competition, even if you're sort of you're in the sort of fourths and fifths and stuff like that, but you have one event that you walk through and he's got one event in here where he can absolutely just stroll through. Because yeah. even if they put a two hundred kilo log up, and I know it's very different when we're talking about stringing them together, but if any man on the planet right now could, it's Graham. Yeah, and I know other people are in contention to lift, you know, the same weight and so on and so forth. But stringing them together is a totally, totally different ball game. But if you were to ask if there's one dude on the planet that was possible of doing it, it's Graham Hicks. Oh, his his log lifting is looking tremendous right now. To do what he did last last week, you know, blowing a gale, cracking flags, two twenty, and he basically just strict presses it. It's just nuts. Yeah. Um. But it's one of those things again where it could just it could just put you in that sort of do you know what you're in touching distance of a podium, and then what you're going to get out of him because I think after competition he will be now batten down the hatches, try and fix everything that feels a little bit tweaky at the moment. With with all the other distractions, I'm not entirely sure how he'd be like refocused, but maybe it completely alters his focus right now, and it's like what can I do? How do I get to that final? Um, it's gonna, I'm sure we'll have a number of debates about World's Strongest Man as the build-up yeah. continues. And we've not even mentioned someone like the people that made the other guy that made the final last year, Adam. Yeah, Bish. There's there's, there's so many great guys, and, yeah, yeah. and like I said, we, we we'll talk a lot more about Worlds once we know the groups, yeah. and then even then we know they're going to change and and, yeah. and things. Will, but like right now, we still don't know every single athlete that's going. Yeah. Um, we've got to see what kind of shape people are in by the time it gets closer to that. This it's always fun sort of picking your favorites, but I always try and pick based on events, not on who's my favorite, yeah, but yeah. based on who I think can do well on these events, who I think is going to be in good shape, how their training's looking. And I take all these factors into it. I don't just say, Oh, I want him to win. So I'm going to pick him, which some people do, you know, they, they just pick their favorites to win. I always try and have some sort of logical thought, but, uh, behind yeah. why this guy's going to do well on this. What's he done in the past to, to back up these kind of facts? And um, what's he doing in training to sort of, you know, eradicate those weaknesses? Yeah, yeah. It's going to be, it's, this is going to be a hard year to pick because we haven't had those regular contests. Yeah. We haven't had the visuals of what kind of shape people are in. You know, like I said, Brian, over the last couple of years, he hasn't performed that well in big shows. He's had time to rest. He's had time to prepare. And if, and it's a big if, but if he comes in, in top Brian Shaw shape, I can see him winning this. You know what? Even Brian, at, if, even if he got within 90% of where he's been before, yeah, he's more dangerous than a majority of people out there because of, again, how complete he is. Exactly. Because if he does dial in, then that's as good as you can ever ask of anyone. Sure. sure. You know, it's, it's what people do with that time. You know, are they sat there just going, you know, a few months to go, or is it a case of they can't look, they're already grafting? Exactly that. It's going to be interesting. Any other news that you want to bring up this week before we call it a day for this week's session um, um, episode? We talked earlier about the, the wild cards and we talked about some of the worst things that are coming up. Uh, so soon we've got, uh, obviously, the wild card with Trey. Then we've got the Stones. Uh, is it the following week with Tom Stoltman and Donna Moore? That's correct. Do you get to see arguably the two greatest stone listed male and female on the planet? Um, and as I say, we're talking about wildcards, we're talking about different people further than everywhere. I'm going to go back to the state side for another guy that um, doesn't grab much limelight, but certainly I think from his, uh, his fellow Americans would be put up as probably one of the greatest stone lifters on the surface of the planet right now in a, another young guy. Doesn't look it. He has taken on fully the, uh, the sort of caveman look in Wesley Claiborne. Okay. Um, Wesley, I've seen uh, through OSG, so he's gone through that sort of platform. He's been competing a little while. I think his first competition was way back in um, 2012. Um, he's a young American lad. Seems pretty good in terms of an all-round level of ability to put himself into the category of 
of, of competing against a high level. You know, 115 kilo uh, dumbbell for reps. Uh, he's just got to the point of a 400 kilo deadlift. Um, but it's his stonework. His stonework is exemplary. He's not the biggest guy in the world. He's not the tallest guy in the world. But, you know, 245 kilo stone to a 54 inch platform, it looked like a training rep. It looked immensely easy. And it's just a case of... Two, do you say 200, 245 kilo stone? 245 kilo stone to a 52 inch platform. Okay. Uh, didn't look too much bother. You know, as you know, it's a case of the circumference as well. Yeah, they look sure. big stones. They do look big stones. And, yeah. and when you've spoken to some of the guys out in America as well, like the Brian Benzels, Ken McLennans, you know, you mentioned about who is the best stone lifter. You know, I think from an outside perspective, you'd always look in and say, do you know what? Brian's one of the greatest ever. He, what, he had the world record at one point. Sure. It's amazing how many people mention this young man's name. So it'd be interesting, you know, if we can put up a couple of little clips of what he's done, you know, into, into the video. But if you get the chance uh, on Instagram, look up Wesley Claiborne, uh, give him a little bit of a view, look at some of his training. Um, Wes, if you are watching Kidder, listen, you're going to get a lot of love from this side of the planet. Um, as much as I love a donut, <laughs> put them down for a little bit. Just <laughs> concentrate a little bit harder on honing and rounding everything up. Because, mate, I genuinely believe there's a great future for you, Kidder. And it's a case of don't think the eyes aren't on you. There are a number of people watching and want to see you do well. So uh, head down, arse up, work hard, mate, and your stonework is exemplary. Awesome. I think we need to make this a weekly feature. Marcus's guy to look out for. Yeah. The caveman. Hey, the caveman comes calling. I've actually reached out to a couple of people as well. In the next couple of weeks, uh, we're going to have a little bit of a, a look at um, a guy out of New York. He competes in the under under 80s. Uh, and a guy back out in Western Australia uh, who was world's strongest man at under 90 kilos. And an absolute monster of a human being. Again, just one of the guys that maybe a lot of people aren't going to have noticed. But uh, trust me, my eyes are, are, are you know, they're sort of honing in on uh, these uh, exceptional talents from in around the planet as well. If you've got people that you want to put forward, get in touch. Yeah, guys, don't forget to comment. Let us know what you want to hear us talking about. Guys, you want us to be looking at. All these things are important. Obviously, Marcus and myself do kind of scour the internet and, you know, social media and look for up and coming talent, but we can't see everyone. So let us know who you think deserves a mention. Let us know any results that you think... Um, we'd like to know about obviously Ooh. yeah go on yeah, which I... reminds me one one sort of uh, mention before we get all the way to the end uh andrew black uh took part in um dublin's strongest man no belfast strongest man sorry and yeah. uh and one at the weekend uh trains out of scotland he's not been in strongman very very long his numbers uh, are shooting up but it's his performances as well. They're getting a little bit more rounded. It's, again, it's another one of those guys as well where you just think, do you know what? Okay, the numbers are going in, a, in sort of like a, an upward direction. Where are you going to be in three or four years' time? Are you going to stay the course? Are you going to keep picking up these sort of like, uh, you know, local titles and, you know, then on to a national title and you can be standing next to some big boys in like the, the Stoltmans? What can you do? This is it. I mean, if, if for any of the up and coming guys, the, the wannabe guys that want to get into this, girls and guys, I mean, we're going to feature yeah. the, the women as well. If you want to be good, despite all the politics that goes on, you know, behind the scenes, if you keep winning and keep doing your thing, keep coming back time and time again, keep getting better, you will get noticed. And that is the, the best bit of advice I can give you. We will try our best to make things better, make a clearer path. Yeah. But if you keep winning shows you keep getting better you will be noticed and you will get your opportunity that's it for episode two marcus it's been great to chat to you as always guys i hope you're enjoying the show please comment below let us know that you're enjoying it please remember to like share and subscribe to the channel and and share these these episodes just to get as many people watching as we can we'll be back next week with more strength action take care